ERA. It's the first number most fans look at when judging a pitcher. But here's the problem. ERA doesn't give us an accurate measurement of a pitcher's skill. It doesn't care if your shortstop boots a double play ball. It doesn't account for windblown bloops or seeing eye singles. And it definitely doesn't tell you how good a pitcher actually is. That's why today, we're breaking down the top five stats that actually matter. The ones MLB teams use to evaluate talent, project future success, and build pitching staffs from the ground up. Let's go deeper than ERA and start with what pitchers can actually control. For over a century, ERA was the best stat to evaluate pitchers. It was simple. Fewer runs equals a better pitcher. But the game changed. Pitchers started throwing fewer innings, defensive strategies got more complex, and we gained the ability to track every single pitch with precision level detail. And with that, we realized something. ERA doesn't always tell the truth. You can pitch six great innings and get burned by a bloop in a misplayed fly ball and suddenly your ERA takes a hit. You can give up rockets right at defenders and ERA thinks you're an ace. That's why we have evolved. First to whip, then FIP, and expected ERA. Now, CSW percentage, stuff plus, and individual pitch run value. Stats that strip away noise and focus on what a pitcher actually does well. And these aren't just for analysts. MLB teams are using them to sign free agents, call up arms for the minors, and design entire game plans. In today's video, we are going to break down the top five stats that you can use to replace ERA. And like our last video on the top five hitting stats, our goal today is to introduce you to these stats. If you want a deep dive on any of them specifically, check out the links in the description for more. So if you want to understand pitching like the pros do, it's time to go beyond ERA. Let's start with FIP and Sierra. FIP stands for Fielding Independent Pitching, and Sierra stands for Skill Interactive ERA, or Earned Run Average. You can think of these two stats as the next level up from ERA. They're better than ERA because it strips away defense from the equation completely and only focuses on what a pitcher can control. So what are those things? They're strikeouts, walks and hit by pitches, home runs, and in Sierra's case, quality of contact. FIP is a simple, clean alternative to ERA. By eliminating any balls in play that the defense could have had some effect on the result of that play, we see a true snapshot of what a pitcher is capable of. This will obviously favor guys who get a lot of strikeouts and don't walk a ton of people, which are, of course, both good things. But what it ignores is the soft contact specialist that certainly still has a place in today's game. And that is where Sierra goes even deeper, by factoring in batted ball types. It values all of the same metrics that FIP does, but it also takes into account a pitcher who consistently generates weak contact through pop-ups and ground balls. The nice thing about both of these stats, they're adjusted to mimic the league average ERA each season. So, if you're familiar with what a good ERA is, these stats will be very easy to transition to. For reference, your benchmark for both stats are under three, that's ace territory. In around four, you're getting closer to league average. So why do they matter? FIP and Sierra are often better predictors of future ERA than ERA itself. If a pitcher is a 4.2 ERA and a 3.1 FIP, he's probably due for some positive regression in his future outings. These are the first numbers teams look at when trying to identify hidden gems. Next, let's look at CSW percentage, the dominance detector. CSW percentage stands for called strikes plus whiff percentage. It's the stat that tells you pitch for pitch how good a pitcher's individual pitches are based on the positive results that occur for that pitcher. The formula is as simple as the name itself. Called strikes plus whiffs all divided by total pitches. The benchmarks for this stat, above 30% is solid and above 32% is elite. Unlike ERA, or even strikeouts per nine, CSW percentage is immediate feedback. Teams use it to analyze individual pitch effectiveness. If a pitcher is throwing a slider with a CSW percentage of 34, and that's his best pitch using this stat, you would expect that pitcher to throw that pitch more frequently since it's been getting the best results for him. This stat is great because it allows you a quick way to dive into a pitcher's arsenal. It blends deception, command, and stuff into one tidy number. If your CSW percentage is high, you're getting swings and freezes, and that's good. Next, let's jump into expected stats. 
StatCast changed everything. Now we can evaluate pitching based on the quality of contact against, not just the results. Instead of relying on what has happened on the field, we can dive into what has happened historically with batted balls hit at a similar exit velocity and launch angle. Some expected stats we rely on for pitchers include expected ERA and expected FIP, expected WOBA, and expected batting average and expected slug against. Like I said, all of these are based on what should have happened, not what actually did. These stats matter because they expose bad luck, they highlight overperformances, and they spot sustainable success. If a pitcher gives up a 210 expected batting average, but opponents are currently hitting 290 off of him, these stats tell you that there's something off and that those poor results may be a fluke, and your actual stats will tend to normalize towards those expected ones. Expected stats let you cut through the noise and see how a pitcher is expected to perform in the long run. Next, let's talk about Stuff Plus, measuring raw pitch quality. Stuff Plus is one of the newer kids on the block, but front offices are obsessed with it. Each team has their own internal model that scores pitch qualities based on velocity, spin, pitch movement, and their release metrics. Similar to other plus stats, it is set to a 100 scale. Because the calculation of individual Stuff Plus models vary depending on each team, I'll give you a general scale based off of Fangraph's Stuff Plus metric. 100 is always going to be league average, no matter the model. Over 110 is going to be nasty, and above 115 is going to be some of the best stuff in the league. Stuff Plus is predictive. It tells you how good a pitcher's arsenal is, regardless of results. The great thing about Stuff Plus, as compared to stats like CSW percentage, is it doesn't matter who's in the batter's box. It could be a high schooler, or it could be Shohei Otani. The movement, release, and velocity will always be measured the same. It's why teams are now calling up pitchers with limited innings. If the stuff is elite, you can predict how it will do against big league hitters, and the results usually follow. It's also why you see teams invest heavily in guys with a 4.5 ERA, because he's sitting 97 with a bang and slider. Stuff Plus is one of the stats that all advanced teams rely on for evaluating pitchers. Want to see how your stuff stacks up? Pitch Logic is the easiest way to measure your velocity, spin rate, release point, and more, with all of the data you need right on your phone. Whether you're a pitcher trying to build a better arsenal or a coach tracking progress, this tool delivers. Check out the link at the top of the description to get yours today. And finally, let's talk about run value. It's tracked on a pitch by pitch basis on Baseball Savant. You can think of this as a mashup of CSW percentage and Stuff Plus as it takes into account how well a pitch performs in every specific base runner, count, and out state as compared to what happens typically. If a pitch gets you out of a jam, your run value goes up. If you give up a home run on a poorly placed 0-2 pitch, your run value goes down. This stat tells you how valuable each pitch or pitcher is in terms of preventing runs. A plus 15 run value slider, that pitch is dominating hitters. A negative 10 run value fastball, that's a liability. This is how teams optimize pitch usage, design pitch arsenals, and exploit matchups. Pitchers don't just throw their best pitch anymore, they throw what's most effective, and run value helps us find that answer. All right, I've thrown a lot at you today, but here are the stats that actually matter for pitchers. FIP and Sierra. This is going to be performance that the pitcher can actually control. CSW percentage. How often are you fooling hitters? Expected stats, like expected ERA and expected WOBA, are going to strip luck out of the equation. Stuff Plus is going to show how nasty each pitcher's arsenal is. And Run Value from Baseball Savant is going to show how effective each individual pitch is. If a pitcher rates well in three or more of these, he's legit. If he checks all five, that's your ace. If you're into breakdowns like this, check out our other videos on FIP, pitch design, and why fastballs are being used less than ever. And drop a comment. Which pitching stat do you trust most, and which one needs to go? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Simple Sabermetrics.